Uh, this is Anne with an anagram on some replit features that um, it, it may be time for you to um, learn about and take advantage of. Um, so these are all sort of advanced features. Um, I don't talk about them too much at the beginning of the course because there's just so much for you to absorb anyway. But at some point, um, it's really useful to begin taking advantage of some of the advanced features that Replit has. Um, this is an example. Um, I've done a couple of vids with um, some version of this this morning. And so I just, um, I'm just going to start with this. Um, the content of the um, index and style files is not really important here, so I just have something. Um, I am, however, going to introduce a defect into here just to illustrate one thing. Um, so Replit has the ability to um, help you find errors, and it does that using um, this gutter area over on the right. And, um, and that's, that's fine. Um, for some reason, well, we know why. It's a cultural thing. They've chosen red and green as, um, or at least red, to determine um, that they have certain problems. Other problems are displayed in green. Um, and um, culturally, of course, in, in my culture, um, red means stop and green means go, or in this case, it probably ought to be yellow. Um, because yellow is a warning. Um, if you have the common form of um, red-green colorblindness, this does not help you very much. Um, and I think I've pointed out in a previous video that you can control that to some degree if you go over here and you choose to use the dark theme. One of the things you find is that the, the standard colors have changed quite a bit. Um, lots of people think a black background is more restful on the eyes. I prefer it also for my own work. For demos, however, and to show things on a video, I think the light theme is a lot easier for everybody else to see. So I'm going to switch back to that. Um, but, but even here where the um, selectors are not red, you still have red showing for errors. Um, so that's just, that's just probably a limitation of replica. Um, I'm just going to put the, the um, curly bracket here and get rid of the error. Um, we don't really need working code, but it never, never hurts. It's never good to leave an error lying around that you know is there. Um, okay, so um, a few things about this. Again, this right hand area that when I bring my mouse over it, it turns darker. That's called the right gutter. Okay, um, equally, there is a left gutter. Um, which is wider. So the left gutter is, um, is everything to the left of the numbers, the numbers, and then this little area where in um, current modern fashion, controls appear and disappear. So you have to know they can be there in order to bring your mouse over here and make them show up. And these are the fold marks. When you have a really long file, sometimes it can be useful to fold your code into blocks um, that are shorter. So if I come over here and I click that little minus sign, that whole rule, multi-line rule, folds up. And so one of the things you can do if you're working on a big CSS file is you can simply fold rules as you think they're finished. And then um, there's just less to look at. Now, there's also, um, and then if you want to get the code back into view. So you can do that one at a time. Um, but you also have in your command palette a fold all and, and a corresponding unfold. I don't learn the um, command line shortcuts for these. I don't use them that often. Um, it's not that many keystrokes. Um, that feature can also be super helpful um, here in the um, HTML, if you're, if you're trying to understand HTML for applying CSS. Um, if you fold all, a little bit too much disappears, but then you can start opening things up in the body and, and actually get a real nice sense of sort of what the outline structure of the body is without having to see all the detail at one time. Um, so other things that are useful, um, I often get CS files um, turned in that look like this, um, just have, have kind of random um, margins and things like that. Um, because if you don't know some of the tricks, it's kind of hard to keep everything lined up just right. So I wanted to show you a couple of tricks. Um, you can always, of course, 
one line at a time, come over here and hit a couple of a couple of tab characters. But the thing that's a little more useful is being able to um, move a whole block at a time. So for example, if I wanted to line up everything that's inside that rule, all those styles um, together, I can do one of two things. Let me do that again. I can click at the top line. Okay, and notice I'm clicking to the left of the number and drag down as many lines as I want. Okay, and then at that point, I can use my shift tab key to start moving code back. So I'm undenting. And then once I get everything undented right at the margin, I can indent it with the tab key as many times as I want. Now, the other thing is um, you can do, oh, I should fix that also. Hang on. That's bothering me. Um, the other thing you can do is you can, you can select, okay, I did this by dragging, click and drag, okay. The other thing you could do is select, um, let me just show you. If I, if I do a control all and I do that business where I shift tab and I get everybody flush, okay. Then if I wanted to um, get all of my styles indented the same way, I can, let me see if I did do this right. I am holding down the control key and clicking that, click, click, always holding the control key, click, 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 click. And then I can move them with one single tab key. That just turns out to be super handy. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, I think that's it. Um, basically you do have, you have lots of control. Um, there's no auto format for the style CSS files. So you do have to manage your um, indenting correctly. Um, and I guess the only other thing I'd point out is um, particularly for the CSS project that you have, you will um, often be doing multiple rules on, on one line, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I don't do that when I'm when I am writing my own CSS, um, specifically because if I have a defect and I get um, a red line here, okay, then um, it's hard to know which of those two things is broken. Uh, of course, I just broke that one. But if I, if each of those attributes and values is on its own line, it's much easier to um, be able to pick out which one has the problem. So let me fix that. Okay. Um, and I think that's it. Hope it helps.